Let us try an example to analyze the moment acting on a column. A substitute frame shown in the figure here is taken from a building frame. The loading that caused the maximum column moment is shown in the figure, which there will be a minimum load at shorter span and maximum load at the longer span. The GK is 25 kN per meter and the QK is 10 kN per meter. The height of the column above the beam is 3.5 and the height of the lower column is 4 meter. The length of the beam on this side is 6 meter while the length of the beam on the other side is 4 meter. We are asked to determine the moment acting on the upper and the lower column. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, first you need to determine the stiffness of each member. For this kind of substitute frame, the K for the column it will be EI per L and the K for the beam it will be half of the typical stiffness of the beam. Therefore, it is equals to one half of the EI per L. The second moment or initial it will be depending on the cross-sectional area of the member and the E it will be constant throughout the structures. The cross-section area it will be the same as the previous examples. Therefore, the I for the beam and columns are given here. The stiffness now is half of the stiffness of the beam while the stiffness of the column it will remain the same. The stiffness of each member is shown in this diagram. Next, you determine the design load for the maximum and minimum load. The fixed end moment for the maximum and the fixed end moment for the minimum are given here. It is illustrated here at the both sides of the columns. You will see there will be differences between the fixed end moment and at the current stage, the moment is not taken by the column. The moment taken by the upper and the lower column, it will be dependent on the degree or stiffness of the respective members. First, you need to determine the differences between the fixed end moment which is equal to 146 minus 45 to be multiplied with its stiffness divided by the total stiffness of this joint. You will obtain the upper moment and lower column moments given here. As illustrated here, due to smaller effective height of the upper column, it is theoretically taking a slightly higher degree of moment load in comparison to the lower column. It is noted that this method may not be used for determining the moment taken at the beam here, as the moment load could seriously be underestimated. This method can only be used to determine the moment acting in the columns.